Ten thousand dollars. So it's smudgy squares, huh? That's interesting. Two possibilities. Either Cooper loves it, and you have to love it, like in an Emperor's New Clothes situation, or he thinks it's a joke, and you'll look like a fool if you pretend to dig it. People like him pretend they understand this. He has a brochure in here, something that explains it. I don't think it's supposed to be explained. I'm an artist, okay? It must mean something. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're just supposed to experience it. Because when you look at it, you do feel something, right? It's like looking into something very deep. You could fall in. Welcome to Four Side Fights, featuring Nobody Knows, Unsure, Chroma, and Bonfire 10. Citizens of Four Side, I'm Jack Zilla, and I know, number one, with Slay the Spire 2 coming out in 2025, we may never see the Crimson Blur again. Number two, I need a way to contact the Phenom, the Fe Phenom, for being the best Game Watch player I've ever fought. GG's. Uh, number three, Ken Cosgrove was right about Rothko's. And number four, the menswear guy on Twitter has convinced me it's time to bring back suits for commentary, not as a sign of esports deference, but as a way to look good. Let's go to each side. Should commentators who are so inclined save men's fashion and get some tailoring done, or would you rather have them perish like a dog in quarter zips and graphic tees that they didn't even wash inside out? Let's start with uh, Nobody Knows, a.k.a. Jake Johnson, who is not from New Girl, uh, but who did build a s demonic super box with his pals at Satisfy called The Glyph and is the T.O. of many events, including the upcoming Invincible in Madison. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, I think that any uh, any advancement in male fashion is a good thing. Uh, I think that for many, many years, uh, caring about what you look like has been kind of like uh, looked down upon from a toxic masculinity standpoint. So I think taking it back, uh, and, uh, f fighting back against the evils of, uh, of close cropped suits, uh, with, with our good pal, uh, die, uh, die workwear, uh, mm -hmm. is, is a great thing. I think, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I think we should. Too uh, long. Should... Let's go to unsure the Chicago. No, fashion, fashion, out... fashion come Skip yeah, the forward. intro. Fashion comes around. Bring back the gamer <laughs> shirts. Bring back the gamer shorts. We see the Jinko jeans coming back. No, we can. Uh, I'm gonna see the Legend of Zelda <laughs> shirts. I'm gonna see the cargo shorts, and I'm gonna see the high rise and you know socks and sandals. If I don't see those at the next major, we're losing things. We need to bring yeah. it back to our My roots. My intro for you was this is unsure the Chicago TO who put out such hot takes on Twitter this week that he earned his spot here by force. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Chroma, who is hopelessly addicted to Bellatro. His family only safe because the game doesn't use real money. Jack, did you know that you could deduct the cost of Jokers on Gold Stake from your taxes? That's true. <laughs> and what people don't realize is that suits are really goddamn funny. Imagine yeah. Radar in a suit saying, Yeah, I'm pretty sure 80% of the scene is on the spectrum. And wow, that was a good up air from Cody. It was a good up there from Cody. And finally, uh, let's go to Bonfire 10, who I've been disappointing as a duo Q partner in League of Legends. Yeah, we're 0 and 6, I think. Oh. No, no, no. We won a couple the other time. No, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we did. We no, just you won, won, our, we won our you first game. game. Okay, okay. I don't remember, but I'll, I'll trust you. We're I think that, that we should bad. do. I think we should have like a, just an all formal wear event at some point. Like everyone, not just Ooh. commentators, wearing like pants. I think that'd be cool. And, I love like, that. Anyone who's not willing to, this like probably a little weirder, and they mm -hmm. don't show up, and that's cool. Make them the weird ones. I like it. Welcome they to Four are. Side Fights. We've got four outstanding guests today who are going to act as pundits as I throw topic after topic at them. They'll give their takes. If they're entertaining or interesting, I'll give them points. If they're boring, repetitive, or patently unreasonable, I'll subtract. And of course, I can mute any contestant at any time for any reason. The player with the most points at the end is our winner. They get to commentate the three losers as they take it to Four Side in a free-for-all so we can see exactly how their punditry translates to melee. 
Let's get started with our first topic. We come fresh-ish off of Battle of BC 6, which ended with Cody going on another blistering loser's run. After losing to Sunsei in a game five on winner's side, he 3-0'd Scarzo Axe and Leffen in a row, then 3-1'd Josh Man Mango and Jmook in a row, and then 3-0'd Zane and Amsa uh, twice. He went 27-3 and in nine sets to win the tournament. He's done it again and tweeted out that he was the best loser's bracket player of, of all time, basically, before walking it back out of respect for Mango. But should Cody be being deferential right now? He now has multiple all-time great loser's runs. Even without Mango's longevity, should we let Cody cook? No. No, I'm going <laughs> to start worry. with this one. Uh, this is he, He's taking the respect out of the true goat of loser's bracket runs. He's saying he's number one because he did the big house. He did Battle of BC. No one knows it like Kelly Smith. That man puts himself into loser's bracket. He starts willingly. He loses to everyone, not just to give wins, just because he feels like it. He just wants to play melee. I can remember the words of Michael 41 billion trying to emulate it deep into 2018. He said, why did you lose to this unranked player in Chicago? I just wanted to play more. That's it. These are real gamers. Cody doesn't want to do it. He doesn't. He doesn't do it for the love of the game. Michael and Kelly. Those are the real guys. All right. I've lost uh, JD. I'll, I'll send a note to production. I've lost control of the points, so I'm gonna have to call them out manually if you're able it's to do that. My turn but... now. Finally. All right. It's your turn. I, that I four points for unsure. <laughs> now that Jack's points are gonna get confused, I can finally oh, no. let it happen. <laughs> I think Unsure is right that Cody has no joy or magic or soul in his loser's runs, but I think that's what makes him so powerful. The problem with Mango's loser's runs is that anything after, let's say, Revival of Melee 1, people kind of enjoyed losing to Mango. Sure, they get like a little upset. There was one time that PP got tricked by Mango switching colors and got super depressed afterwards. But I have never seen so many top players look like they were about to walk right into the river after that run that was <laughs> devastation they apologized on twitter Obsa said i don't got it i really was hoping i didn't want to play him today and i got 60 wobbles didn't even get 60 i mean that was probably the meanest thing i've ever seen on the sticks happen to that many good players in a row and that's why i think it's the best losers run of all time he made everyone losers <laughs> anybody else um i think that I think that there is a uh, there is an argument that he is crafting currently. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if he's there, but I think we can look back at a few of his other losers runs. We can look at uh, look at. I can't remember which Smash Summit it was. It was like eight or nine, but he was down horrible, and he came back all the way uh, to like fourth or fifth or something. Uh, he he's always had the losers player in him, and we're just really seeing it come out now because people are finally beating him before before winners quarters. Yeah. Something changed. Something changed, and he had the uh, the heart of a has had the heart of a war ever since. Bonfire. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's necessarily the best like losers bracket player. I think he's just the best player and happens to be in a losers bracket. <laughs> That's just kind of what it is. That's very fair. Although I don't even care at like a major tournament if the setups are still up on Sunday. Who who fucking cares who's in losers or winners? I'm just playing friendlies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for those of us you know, who watched the, the top eight of the tournament that we paid, you know, all this money to go to and want to be entertained by, you know, it is kind of, it is somewhat important. Uh, the score stands at, uh, uh, let's call it from, I'll kind of go like a round in, uh, from, from nobody unsure points. from a bonfire. It's four, four, six, six. Just so you know, let's move on to our second topic. B O B C six had less uh, or fewer melee singles players in attendance than they hoped for this year. Uh, 400, uh, basically, uh, attendees of the event's 1,250 entrants. The event had virtually universal positive reception, right? People praised uh, the venue, the city of Vancouver itself, the stacked roster of top 100 players. Uh, is the Canadian border simply too strong of a barrier for tournaments? Will Canada ever have a super major that reaches the status of a big house or a genesis? So I, I actually have an issue with this because it's in uh, British Columbia, right? So like, you the the thing is like you see those words and it's like okay, so is it? It's in Colombia? Is it in Britain? And then it's in Canada of all places. I think most people just heard those first few words. They just write it off like, well, I can't go to. That's so that's so long of a flight. Yeah. And I think we just get confused by that. It feels it to me like. The scene has shifted post-COVID. We've all been around since, you know, at least the pre-COVID days. 
it was like the West Coast dominating everything before, right? If you if Battle of BC was the big pinnacle of Canadian events as it was five, six years ago, if the equivalent event was happening there, I guarantee the turnout would be a lot more just because it can appeal to that side of the coast. But if the scene has shifted more to the East Coast, like we see the powerhouse that it is now, it's just harder to cross that, you know, that continental gap. Mm-hmm. My answer is a lot more nationalistic. Melee lives in the United States of America. And I'll say that till the day I die. You go, you go, you go to these these convention centers up 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 in the north. It's not the same. It doesn't have the same soul. It doesn't have the same the same drive of, of us of us hardworking, bootstrapping Americans. And I and and we have our super majors, and I'd like to keep them in my shores. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Battle BC venue is actually so fucking amazing, though. I'm sure it's great. It's so good. <laughs> how how can none. they get people to get uh, passports so that they can? go because apparently they, they have all sorts of you know i saw deer doing all sorts of different calculations on twitter about how vancouver is actually pretty cheap to go to it's not that expensive to get flights the cost is not is not a barrier compared to any other major uh it's just that smashers don't have passports what do we do to change that we can't do anything about it jack <laughs> smashers are stupid mango didn't pay taxes for three years you think he's getting a passport no what we do is we wait right after genesis and we put smashers in a series of buses maybe 10 or 20 and we just ship them right up and we run bobc immediately afterwards and that's what we do we have to just guide them herd them across this border and i'm pretty sure we can legally do it because the american passport is like 17 of every other passports Mm -hmm. i went to the dominican republic it's ridiculous (laughs) they just look at you and they're like yeah (laughs) there wasn't even customs man it was crazy all right go ahead no, we got to get like military draft style, put the booths up by the security desks. If we thought the Genesis lines were bad this year, next year, there's going to be a passport requirement to get through. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to sign it. You have to fill it out. Birth certificate, social security, two forms of identification. Then you're through. I think you should have to show the W-2. You were spitting in the pre-show about this. I'll show your W-2s to get into an event. If you don't show the W-2, you're not getting in. <laughs> All right, a thousand points to everyone for that extra 200 for Chroma. Let's move on to our next topic. It was announced in David Lynchian fashion at uh, uh, BOBC. Don't park on the grass is returning to the Pacific Northwest. I immediately signed up, which is something that I don't usually do. Uh, What has this tournament done correctly that it has earned such love that it can be reawakened after a six year slumber and people are still very, very hyped for it? Jack, what it's done well is it's become nostalgic. That's what it's done well. It was... uh, don't park on the grass happened during a very specific time in melee uh that we were growing we were huge and it was it was just exciting it was a new tournament it was sponsored by geico that's weird um we so it's hearkening back to an earlier time where things weren't as dire things weren't as desperate and also we all like aiden three aiden things is not even the head to though go ahead unsure yeah but it's it's the association man one aiden correct nobody knows is right <laughs> Just the name of Aiden. That's it. That's number one. I'm not going to elaborate. Two, Europe. Not going to elaborate. Three, the green color palette. Excellent choice. I love the themes. Awesome. (laughs) Good decision behind that. Love it. Keep it going. That's why I'm signing up. Mm -hmm. Aiden invented being a skinny legend and also mother. And I really think you could get anyone anywhere if you just... Think about the vibes that he perpetrated, I will say. He invited a lot of players. Perpetrated, he perpetrated vibes. Are you a vibe perpetrator, Cromer? A vibe perpetrator? No, Aiden is the vibe master. Pat's house, okay. one of my favorite memories was Aiden getting absolutely just blasted off of, I don't know, a third of a bottle of wine because his tolerance is really, you know, he's a, he's a big skeletal man. But, you know, you would think the alcohol could disperse itself among such a, a large surface area. But it doesn't really happen. He is, an, he is a great deadlifter, though. I'd love to put him in some sort of machine or device. And I forgot the question at all. This is an angle that I hadn't even thought about. Like, the yard is, is like, unironically um, responsible for a huge, you know, amount of people who are new to Melee in the past two or three years. Does merely the fact that this is, like, Aiden's origin story make it a good event for people that are big, big old yard fans to, to go to? I think so, uh, but I also think that that would not matter if not for Aiden's reputation as a very high-level TO in the community. Like it, it, it has but a good has reputation. Has he owned that reputation, or are we just sucking yes. and sucking and waiting? No, with his attention. Uh, yes, em- empirically great TO. 
He was one of the first people to do a quad stream at uh, main stage. He always ran best of five. The tournaments always ran on time. He always had great players Wait, coming out. Mikey? He was gone at main stage before they did quad. That's Mikey. Was he? That's Mikey. Ah, okay, yes. Mikey and you Aiden. All right. Both and of them you know great. what? And Aiden <laughs> ruined round here. robin pools at, at the last uh, don't, don't Park in the Grass. That, was, they, that tournament is single handedly hey, responsible. NMW outskilled more. everyone by getting two concussions at the same time, <laughs> skipping all the pools, and then destroying IBDW. <laughs> I, in the back can after. you tell the story, <laughs> Chrome? Because I heard it the other day and it blew my mind, but it is a very NMW story. It's the most NMW story I've ever heard. And I've. He, he once had me do a dragon snap, and I won't elaborate on what that is. All right, fair enough. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh, Moki posted a four side fights. Oh, I forgot to do points. Uh, uh, like 150 for each of you. Uh, I don't know. The vibes are pretty even. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Moki posted a four side fights bait tweet asking for hottest takes about melee. Uh, we're going to steal them, especially those that came from our pundits. The first comes from Bonfire 10. Uh, you argued that the timer should be four minutes to encourage hype timeouts uh, without blowing up tournament schedules. Pundits, how do you feel about the crack she's smoking? And will Tof ball Tof's balls ever be the same? Tof's balls? <laughs> what does that have to do? I don't know. I, I saw that was engagement it's a, it's a, it's a bait. It's a good one. And yeah. I, saw it was in, I saw the engagement bait. I thought, I want to do that too. Mm -hmm. So I posted this. I know that's pretty crazy, but I've been saying four minute timer for a while. I said it on this show, actually, last yeah. year. Uh, yeah, I, I, heard, I know Moki went over it. He was like, it, it actually just is too short amount of time. Sometimes like even Fox Dittos need to go past four minutes. Uh, and I would say the same thing to him as I say to the, the Samus mains who don't want to play, who want to play out Samus Peach. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to go past four minutes. And when you say that, you're saying, oh, it organically can go there without having time out. I don't think it should. I think that you are playing too campy and you should run at each other more. And the person who's ahead is the one who deserves to play campy. The person who's behind shouldn't get to just camp because there's no realistic threat of a timeout i feel like with a timeout there's more hate in my heart and we need more of that there's not enough there's not enough vitriol there, there's too much love with a, a timeout we need to prove through eight minutes that you really dislike how your opponent's playing and that the only way to do that is eight minutes I, in fact i say lengthen the timer we need to go deeper we haven't seen the extent that we can take it Wait, but lengthening the timer, how would that make more people do timeouts and play this e evil? We figure out how to stall longer. The, the meta is only made for eight-minute timeouts. We need to figure out a 12-minute timeout. We can get there. We need to work harder. Well, I think, I think that our timeouts should be decided by panel vote because everything else in this community, like everything else in this community, mm -hmm. uh, everything's decided by social pressure. Uh, yeah. timeouts haven't been happening just because you don't want to be the, the, the person who wants to do, be doing the timeout. Sure. We yeah. can make it for sure. We can make it four minutes. We can do it all, all of that, but real, the core tenant of melee is social pressure and making sure that you play the way I want you to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Chrome. I have a couple thoughts here. Number one, uh, this represents a pretty solid balance change in the game, and so we're going to have to institute other rules to preserve this balance, and that is <laughs> we are going to have to ban Adderall. I can't have a Falco who blinks twice during the best of fives now. I actually commit to camping me on the top platform. That can't happen. We need that to go away. I do like that Puffs will probably time everyone else and get bullied more than they have ever gotten before. That's probably a good social interaction, but I really think we should go further and that we should have three four-minute rounds, and then uh, we just vote. It's like a rap battle, and you just yeah. have the crowd, and whoever's mm -hmm. loudest on one side wins. We just haven't done anything like that. We're so afraid. Uh, you know, Rishi showed us the way so long ago that, that we don't need to be beholden to these kind of decrepit rule sets, and we can, we can optimize for what skills we want to reward. And for me, it's, uh, it's making the crowd like you. Uh, let's do uh, 300 points to uh, Andrew and Tori. Let's do uh, 100 each for Chroma and Jake. Uh, let's go on to our next topic. Um, yeah, we can do this one. Who will beat Zane first? Hungrybox, Smokey, or Mango? Uh, it's got. I mean, it's got to be Mango, right? He's done it before. He's training. He's getting healthy or unhealthy, whichever one makes the bird go faster. And uh, he's, I, I have to believe that. I must. You know? Why must you? On this show, we, 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 we interrogate our, ourselves. All right. 
because I because I believe in a world where Mango can win, and that that's every time I watch a top eight where there's where there's a there's there's a man with a beard on it. I'm <laughs> I'm rooting for the bearded man. Mm -hmm. So Josh Man is also really and Zane are great. both. Really, so, so, but in this in this situation, this hypothetical, Zane and Mango both have beards. I, I'm moving on. Who else wants to take this? I, see, I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to say Hungry Box is the next one to do it. In kind of like a slingshot maneuver, he's positioning himself just behind him every single time, and one time he's just going to overtake him. It's just bound to happen. He can't not do it. H Box has proven time and time again he's going to see top eight every single interaction. No one else has that consistency. Yeah, it's like for all mankind. He's slingshotting around the gravity of losing uh, to Cody over and over and over. That's right. Gets his first win. He can make it to Mars. Well, Cody will just keep losing to Sunsei, and then h -Box will have his chance to beat Zane. I, mean, I agree with h -Box. I don't think that, that like, it's just spaces are more likely to get blown up by Marth. If, like, Puff will eventually, after enough sets, probably squeak out a win. Like, rest is really good. You just need to actually hit them and... Maybe if HBox starts reaction tech chase resting, there you go. But so I don't think let, that Fox let me think up for a second. Him. Bonfire and 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 uh, unsure. Do you both believe that Puff has a better matchup against Marth than Fox? No. Oh yeah, I yes. do. No, I think I I think Fox beats Marth. I'm gonna <laughs> we'll disagree with that one. Oh I, sorry, I, sorry. I thought you meant sorry. I don't know why I interpreted that. So as you both Fox think that Puff. What, <laughs> that Fox has a better matchup spread, but both of you think that Zane is just so good against Fox that 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 won't be the edge for. Uh, well, Moki's the only Pokemon fox. Mango. I mean, like yeah. the thing is, Zane's smashing his head against Cody's fox like ten hours a day or something. Like uh -huh. I just, it's he's got the experience, he's got the hours, and there's he's been smashing his head against Quiggles lately. It's not great, and uh, and unranked uh, Iron Man's. There's just the H box factor when you have the presence of someone like that sitting next to you, and you don't know what kind of explosive reaction you're gonna get. Anything is possible. Chrome, what do you think? I'm unconvinced. Yeah. I mean, the case for Moki is that he's improving rapidly. He's starting to beat J. Mook a bunch. He truly believes that he can be the best player in the world. And he seems to be getting close and is playing Zane enough at majors that, you know, it's probably going to happen one of these times. Mango, the idea is that he's really getting back into tournament pressure mode. He plays well. He's strong. He's beaten Zane before. Hungrybox got beaten so badly by Zane that uh, it immediately took him out of the running for GOAT for probably the rest of the year. I heard some people yapping about it before the tournament, not after that set. That was pretty rough. Also, the J-Mook set rough. And that's why it's probably going to be touchdown one. I mean, this is how he operates. He's trained for two <laughs> weeks and beat Moki and Cody. If that's we right. somehow devote him to three months, he will either become the greatest player in the world or he'll be 85th by the end of the year. I don't really know. But um, right. I don't think any of them can beat him, so probably Hungrybox will do it because God is truly dead. 20 points to everybody, 50 for, uh, for unsure. Uh, let's move on to our next question. The next barrage of topics from, uh, from Moki's tweet, we're going to go back there, comes from unsure. We're going to take the most inflammatory two that unsure put out and his list of like nine or whatever. Um, the first one that we want to talk about, unsure argued that botches, boxes, notches, and Z jumpers are quote, not a problem. The people who complain the loudest do not understand how they work or how not broken they are, unquote. Pundits, Z-Jump has converted another in Josh Man, and more are certainly to follow. We appear to be endlessly circling this dialogue, uh, but my conviction is that if we talk about it over and over, I'll eventually ban, you know, all this stuff at full bloom or something. So let's spin the wheel again. How do we feel about the crack unsure is smoking? I think that notches and box controllers are fucked and any kind of analog to digital conversion should not be allowed. Why? I think that hitting any kind of angle consistently is an inherent skill with the GameCube controller that Melee has rewarded for the like decades. And then all of a sudden we're saying, well, you have guaranteed consistent inputs now for analog values. And it's like, you can't, people mess up analog inputs all the time. It is not a guarantee. So like having a controller that can do it for you on a digital, you know, you're just pressing the right combination of buttons. It is simply just far more consistent and easier to do. Z jump remapping, I don't really have as much of a problem with. I think button remapping digital to digital is kind of fine. Okay. Chroma? I, Actually, I no, we can go back and forth. We have two box yeah. people and two box haters. Yeah, there we go. It's great. Yeah. I think Z jumping is extremely funny because you can't ban it if boxes exist. It's probably one of the least objectionable things as far as a remap goes. It's, it's you know, 
digital to digital. You're just moving it off of face. There are some rules where you can't move things off of specific faces, and they're entirely based on the balance of the game. You know, just like putting a C stick down modifier on the back of your controller or something like that, or creating some insane monster thing where you can just hit stuff with your pinkies. Um, I think Z Jump's really funny because it really seems like everyone is trying to get Z Jump banned because if they can get Z Jump banned, they can get everything banned, which mm. is extremely funny. I don't think this will ever, ever happen, honestly. I think we're all fucked forever. I think it's time to get on the cheating team. And uh, you know what? I, you know, I, I think, I've lost all hope. I don't agree with that, sure, but I also I agree. Lost. I agree with a lot of this. I think that uh, I think that a lot of this is just that melee has not had a patch since uh, since pal that we don't play on because we decided. And all this is is patch yes. culture. It's just pa- it's patch culture talk. And we don't have game patches, so we have controller patches. You look at any any high level game. Leffen Leffen wants to kill himself because it, because the his characters are getting patched every other week. So we, all we have to talk right. about is patching our controllers. It's that's all it is. We're just bored. I mean, I think we did patch the game multiple times. Like with UCF was the first thing that was like a true no, patch. No, I agree. Right? That's what I'm saying. And then, like it's, well, it's, UCF was more than just, I think it became more than just controller. It also changed slight stage stuff. Like just with the ability to something small is being able to hide the chic name tag when you're up being, right? Like we literally, sure. we fundamentally changed the game. Uh, and then outside of that, things like, uh, what's it called? Um, I don't know what it's called. I can't think of it. Is I lost my train of thought. Nope, yeah, I can't think of it. Uh, there was no, there was no out on four no, I lost it. Nope, I lost it. I ran oh. off the map. Oh, I, 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 I think those uh, patches I do wanna... are about consistency, not about yeah, right. having an advantage over other controller types, though. And I right. agree that I actually like. I hate patches in every other game, and I would still give up UCF and everything that we have if it meant not having oh. rule notches sets, and so. angles. Huh? Like Frozen Stadium. Sorry, that was the uh, yeah, sure. the other one. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it just it comes down to like escalation, right? That that's what the argument always comes down to. People are like, "Well, if I do this, then this is going to happen next, right? I'm going to put the funny doohickey on my pinky." And it's like this is already a banned thing in our rule set. Like you can look Nobody in our rule checks. set. You what? Nobody checks our like. I've seen people show up with shit that in Polish's words is killed Shinzo Abe. No one is cared. <laughs> if, we are we are in the wild west. Can we enforce if I any saw of this? someone with that. If I saw someone with that sitting down next to me, the, the unacceptable behavior. Uh, the, the DK bongo is fine. You can play with the funny little sticks. That's fine. Whatever. But if you come out with the pinky string thing, whatever. No, no, no. Not going to happen. Why is uh, DK bongo legal? Why is that not a problem? That has like three inputs on it. They have okay. less buttons. Let them, let them neuter themselves however they want. They don't have to play the same game. That's fine. We There's can play a- more. I feel like there's a comedy to legality kind of yeah. dichotomy here that yeah. as long as it's funny enough, like say the boxes were all guitar hero boxes. Those are the yeah. only boxes that exist. Okay. No one's complaining. It's just funny enough. Yeah. This, I feel like That's this true. is all stemmed from like, we don't, okay, this is a bad argument to say someone's winning a lot with X. We need man because of that. But it did stem from Pipsqueak destroying HBox and Mango for that all of this really was like, oh man, like this guy really just beat us with a box, right? Uh, nothing I think that's was- true. I think that people were upset before then. You think so? Like, they were as really- soon as the box came out, I remember it was a design that had a, it was a normal arcade stick. It was a stick on the left. It wasn't buttons. And people were just like, no, we're going to get the button one because it's better. And it's like, we had a solution well, for the ergonomic hand they, problems. It was using right. a control stick they, instead of buttons. What? They got the, they got the button direct- one because that guy took the money and ran. Yeah, well, that's why then. I, Someone else make it. Because uh, the, that's the PC you know Chris guy, is what we call that. You know that guy is actually playing in an exhibition like recently? That's or crazy. Upcoming. Wow. I don't think he ran. I think he's still trying. I don't know what's up with that, but no That's one's got I want to focus the discussion a little bit if I could add an extra question loop to this, Go which is what do you think would happen uh, if a tournament of a decent size just banned it all? Just said OEM only, no Z jump, no button remapping, no digital to digital, just OEM or bust. I'd say prove it. Show, open up every controller. You'd make you'd, I, I, the I, tournament I, should I, prove it? I, well, I'm saying, it? like, you you as the tournament organizer ha- now have the onus of proving every single controller is by those rules, right? Like, do do what Magic or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh do, does, which are random deck checks. If you vibe check your opponent, be like, yeah. wow, they're performing some action incorrectly. 
I'm going to check that out. And if they get it, if they find out that it is, you know, invalid software or whatever, banned. I will I mean, say on top of that, if you're forcing OEM only, every time you're forcing that is another dollar in Nintendo's pocket, and I will not stand for that. Oh, no. Uh, hey, he's, he, makes, he, makes, uh, he makes a good point. We just don't have the resources to A, enforce this, or B, take away the internal economy that the modding scene has created. Those modders pay every single tournament money to be at the tournament and to sell y'all the, the $200 controllers that you're buying. This is an important part of the controller of, of the I tournament. I don't need their money. This is broken window, foul. You keep, you keep fucking on my tournaments and I'm supposed to like it? <laughs> Here's the thing. Like I just paid $150 for a controller that has nothing yeah. wrong with it. I just Spark. want a consistent good controller from Spark. Spark are 180 This We can live. The, Spark, it, I, have, I have this right boxes. here. It was I'll made with love. Eating. I have made one. with love from Spark for sure. Well. He it's writes that on all of them. If we ban boxes, then, you know, we we actually would give Spark so much money. He, he would have a huge influx. It's like, we could go, go this, then we legalize him back in, in three years. Yeah, there you go. It's a throwback. He's got a blinking thing going on in there. Is not in is there? Mine doesn't that blink. Is not, that is a bomb. Put, get that where, on. Where, where does that mine blink? Show me the blink here. Where is this? Is there any blinking? I don't even know what this button does. <laughs> Just, <laughs> there's a third one down there. What I don't even it? know what it does. This is awesome. make fun of me. I, I don't know. All right. You so this is say, all about the, the crack that I'm sure was smoking. Three. Oh, oh, what the God, fuck is that? There's so many. I'm saying, okay, the last thing that I have on this is I'm fine with people complaining Tori has good arguments, good discussion on it, but I want to hear that from the people with the very top, you know, with the biggest voices in the scene. If they're going to complain, at least know what you're talking about. What, what do you think they don't know? They, I they, guarantee you, they if look you sit screen, any of go, them... I don't like this. This is crazy. Right. What more? Bad. Bad. Mango's got to stop. Bad. Mango's got to stop talking about controllers and then also pretending he doesn't know what Jump Squad is. <laughs> you can't run both bits. It's, it's a you good got to you can't do both. I think I think this is like the Supreme Court. You don't need to be able to define it, but you know it when you see it. You know when Terrible it's right. That's, that's no, right. No, bad. Ooh. I'm sure followed Ooh. up the that hot Ooh. take with this one. Ices should be banned. What Leave the them fuck alone. Are you I'm, about? I'm starting. I'm going to start this one. I'm going to start it. We we obliterated them by removing wobbling. Okay, we put them in the dirt. Just finish the job, take them out back, and get the character out. If, if you saw this in any other fighting game, if you saw this in any other competitive game, this wouldn't be allowed. They're like, well, that has half of a wobble on some of the stage about? most of the time. Okay? If I'm going to get a handoff at the 30% of the stage and someone's argument is, well, just don't go there, then what is that? That's the worst argument. Just get the character out of there. You are smoking crack. I play Marvel 2? They legalized the fact that after you kill a character, you're allowed to do an infinite as into the corner. That's bad. It, you can do an infinite. <laughs> that's bad. Kill that's the bad. character with like the it doesn't end. And then yeah, no, you can yeah, keep that's not a good them until they, they hit the ground. Not that's the funny no, argument. Melee players, no, that's just because it's so funny. Do they still play that game? No, it's effective because because you put them in the corner and then their next character How comes into that corner. Wait a second, how many people play that game? I, it was at Evo. It was pretty relevant. It was at Evo. Mm, that's it. Pokemane in shambles. Uh, there's unblockables in Third Strike, which is more entered than some of the modern games at Evo this year. Melee players are coddled and weak. We complain about the littlest shit. Dude, some of these other games that people have been playing for years and years and years, I think modern fighting games are also, uh, modern fighting game players are also a little coddled. Come, come down in the depths. Play some Marvel 2. Play some this Third sound, Strike. Play some This sounds shit. like I walked up 13 miles uphill both ways in the snow kind of argument that it was bad then, it needs to be bad now. I played, I fix played it. it yesterday. I It's bad it now. <laughs> it's still bad. We need, we need to this. fix it. Just get them out. There is an argument for banning ice climbers, and it's that they're going out on top. Uh, just this month, Moth has actually beaten Kobol. Kobol has lost to an no. ice climber's going fox. And it's something oh, that no. Ohan actually said he would put down money 400 to 1 against, <laughs> and that it was just not possible to happen under any that's circumstances crazy. Like SFAT beating Zane. No, that's possible. That will happen. I truly believe SFAT will do it this time. No. I thought Moth would this never beat Kobol, and I think Moth is so good. That has happened, and it's time to just descend to the heavens. The characters transcended all human ability. We are calling handoffs wobbles now. Thank this you. is the level of punish that they can now achieve. Slug can just go lift weights for a shitload of time, come back and, and beat J-Mook in the clutch game five, 
There's nothing else this character needs to do other than be touchdown one. Mm. And Armada's ghost. Please, no. Tori, you, sa- you stand to benefit fine, the most dude. from this Who proposal. Cares? No, what do you? No, so well, actually, yeah, I would. Get out of here! I play <laughs> Sheik. You're talking about how when we banned wobbling, wobbling was never banned for me. Wobbling, I've still had to experience it every time I played them, and I do fine. And I love that matchup. It it's it feels alive when the floor is lava, and we don't get to do that anymore as adults, except when you play against ice climbers. And you you accidentally air dodge on a missed wave land onto a platform, and your heart just just starts beating so fast. And I I want to feel that. That's and what, I want to feel that in tournament. That's what I'm talking with illegal, about. Get those guys character. out of there. Get get those funny little wobblers out of there. They're wobbling on all parts of the stage. Don't need them. Fraud wobbler. God, there's this quote at the end of uh, Camus' The Plague where he talks about how this train comes in from out of town, the town that has been suffering from the titular, the titular plague. And uh, uh, all the families come out and people get to see who survived the plague and who didn't. And people realize that some of their family members have been lost. And there's a line he says, he's like, you know, for, for those who were mourning, the plague never ended. And, uh, and uh, so for, for the Sheik players out there, Thank you. I, I feel for you and true. Camus feels for you 100%. Sometimes you uh, don't come back from war. That's right. It comes Sometimes with you. It's like Frodo, you know, some wounds never fully heal. We need to start uh, healing these wounds for the next generations then. Get rid of the ice climbers. No, That's this high. is an argument right. for Harry. war somehow. Uh, Five hundred each for unsure and bonfire for their for their opening of my eyes. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to ban ICs, but they're on they're on watch. Uh, Bowser yeah. is certainly banned. Uh, this next yeah, topic... was Frodo sad about Sam getting married or what? <laughs> he, listen, or is he chill with it? He knows it had to happen. They, they live in a very heteronormative society, you know. Yeah. Only the elves are allowed access to they them pronouns, and that's that's, you that's know, something that, that all common. Middle Earth should benefit Real from. Shit. <laughs> uh, this one, this next topic comes word for word from Edwin Budding. So I'm going to quote: "It has been a year since Hbox and Plop Plup <laughs> dodged the handsome, wonderful, daring Edwin Bidding. That's what he said. A thousand dollar bounty. They have entered no tournaments since. Guys." Does Plup give a shit about Melee? Can we officially dub him retired? He needs a challenge again. Brand every event like All-Star mode. He'll be back tomorrow. You think we just throw an All-Star mode on the event He'll be there. stage and Plup will show up? Yep. Sh- show, him a, show him a raft and an All-Star mode because that guy shows up to Riptide and All-Star mode. That's all he does. Pretty silent in the room. You're pretty alone in this optimism. Is everybody That's else fine? Rumor? I I mean, I think he's vibing. I think he's waiting for the. I think he's waiting for the resurgence. We had a we had a heavy hit to the uh, to the community with the the dissolution of all of of two circuits, uh, and he's coming back when the time is appropriate. Uh, he's biding his time. He's uh, he's in the mountains training, and he'll mm-hmm. get there. If people want to play melee, they'll play melee. If they don't want to play melee, they won't. I don't care about this whole like retirement concept or if they're out of it or not. If he comes back, he, he comes back and plays melee. That's all there is to it. If you're a fan of his, then you'll yeah. be happy then. But who cares? I'm getting sources he's going to Don't Park. That will help him meet his quota of two events per year. But that like he shouldn't be ranked me. if he's not going to shit. Yes, yeah. or is two events enough for ranking? Probably not. Uh, probably not if there's no round robin pools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's that's the that's what he gets for not going then. That's it. And he's fine with that. Chrome. I think he truly was mad at Edwin Budding for offering him a thousand dollars to play melee with Hungry Box. He would pay a thousand dollars not to play melee with Hungry Box or in general. I think I think the vibes are off. I don't think he's had a good time playing this game really in any capacity. He beats Amsa by like a billion. He loses to Cody a lot. There's just, he has no agency, but also all the agency. There's, he's just gamered right. out. All right. 100, 100 points to everybody. This is depression we've, hour. We, okay. We've seen, we've seen Cody lose to Samus in the last, you know, year. We can see Plup do it again. Bring it back. We, we just try. To, Give it a we, shot. We need to ship Plup an industrial amount of Mountain Dew and then he'll get there. Got, get Walter back in the lab making that green <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next topic. That was somber. Uh, who is better, <laughs> Peak Leffen or Peak Cody Schwab? And how many more majors does Cody have to win before he's considered the best Fox ever? None, Cody. Easy, free. 
You're, he's there. It's yeah, over. Yeah, he's already there. Oh yeah. yeah. At every point of Leffern's career, he was doomering about some matchup. Uh, Cody just does it. He he has achieved the one thing that no other Fox main, Fox main in this game has ever done, which is consistency. He sure he'll lose to like a he'll lose to like a Morse code here and there, but it it he he brings it right back. Sure, he'll sometimes be inconsistent, but mostly not. Yeah, but in the same tournament, in the same day, he'll beat everybody else. He beats Marth. He beats Puff. He beats all the char- all the characters that all the Fox mains have complained about for years and years because he just does it. He changed what people think about the Marth Fox matchup in general. This feels incredibly recency biased because last year, up until Gommel, he had a, a pretty high variance of of uh, uh, tournament results compared to Zane in the same exact I, time period. Uh, my opinion has been completely changed based on recent recent results. Okay, since the last yeah. year, one year he has, he's been consistent, and now he's the goat. He's the goat. Yeah, Jeff yeah, Long the lesson was ever consistent. He's so yeah. good. Also, it's like if it's recent, that is closer to current than it was the currently. Than, Everyone uh, is better than they've right. ever been. So you all That's think that Cody is the goat fox. Does no. that mean that he is nope. also? Oh no! No, no I, summer... okay. Tori, you can go first. I w- yeah, yeah. so I would say here. He, this might be brave to say. I don't think that Cody is is just the best fox. I think that he's uh, the number one ranked player right now. Believe it or not. Oh my god. So, that's what it. That's what the it. Points means. would be going down. He beat that. everyone. That's what that There's means. No proof of that. The, the There's summer, no proof, no proof. You have no evidence. Vote if number one. So he, he can't be number one. <laughs> the potential of the summer of 2016 Leffen is still screaming from somewhere. And I, if that man did not have his passport revoked, he was winning everything. And off potential alone, Leffen is the goat, undisputed. I don't know. I, See, Cody, Cody had cancer. Cody had like. Half of his family seemingly die, and like horrible things happen. Leffen's European and medically, Leffen is European, Pretty which similar. counts against him. That was his choice <laughs> to be European. But no, the best fox of all time is PC Chris. You go back, you watch those videos, yeah. you will understand PC Chris was smarter than anybody that has ever existed. Or Javi, I will also accept Javi as the answer. Javi, PC Chris, or Pundungu. <laughs> Two people will laugh. No, the best fox in the world is the one who has beat. That's for the old heads. <laughs> Kelly Smith. First invented, uh, yes. you know, Smith, siphoning off money from the melee scene and then disappearing. And I, I've I never seen like anyone that. camp Falcon with lasers like Kelly Smith. No one has ever no, no. this the fastest the goat. Now that guy, man, the man, the man still man, does man. it. As Kelly Smith rises, so Hungrybox falls. And the last top eight without Hungrybox was on the war path of Kelly Smith's fox. So no other fox in this goat discussion has done what Kelly has done, which is lock Hungrybox out of a top eight. Interesting. interesting. It's, it's gonna, it's interesting. I'm not going to follow that it's up. Interesting. interesting. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh, interesting. Let's move on to our next topic. Aiden Calvin tweeted out a feeler put it for putting on a tournament that acts as a massive invitational to ranked players only, an inverse national Arcadian. One part of the discussion was figuring out what city could both host a large event like this and also be accessible enough by planes, trains, automobiles, etc., to be worthwhile for those invited. In what city would you advise Aiden to put the Giga Ranked Invitational, and what would you name this event instead of the Giga Ranked Invitational? I mean, Chicago is a great city, you know, Chicago. but Chicago's but Chicago's a little expensive. It's a, it's a, it's cheap to fly into. It's expensive to run an event at. There's another city close by that you can get all of these players out to hopefully a sponsorship from Amtrak because there's a nice there's a nice convenient train right up to Milwaukee. Wonderful city on the water. Cheap venues, cheap housing. I think it'd be great in Milwaukee. Uh, and you could call it something like Brew City Bash or something. We love we love uh, oh we God. love alliteration yeah. up here and <laughs> uh, get, get some shit. get out of here. All right, who's next? Chicago, Chicago's a good choice. Uh, I'm biased, obviously. Uh, I've talked with venues about pricing. It's not as insane as you might think. I literally have a list of non-union hotels in the city of Chicago that will are willing to work with me. On- nope, I got to mute that too. Uh, I've got I've got ties to the Chicago union scene and they will hurt me and my family ah. if uh, if this continues on. Let's move on to our next suggestion. <laughs> the alderman. <laughs> <laughs> they know things. Uh, Chrome or, or Tori? I mean, I don't really get how it's different than just a normal major, dude. 
it's <laughs> it's the top players like you don't have your round one pools but like whoever goes to a normal like we, they go out for majors all around the country like anywhere it normally is who cares because they're going to columbia this time, so they'll actually go it just seems weird it's like an arcadian the point is let's shine a, a spotlight on like the upper mid-level players who don't usually get a lot of exposure and now we're saying like you know like what we really need to do let's give the top players some spotlights like that's every major I think it's good though because it could round out data. Like just to look at the 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 event itself is the number one thing people claim like complain about at the end of the year is well we didn't get enough head to head data on this. Why don't we just force them to do it at these events? It's like if majors aren't intentionally seeding their events to make it happen where unique matches aren't happening, we need to have an event for it. Otherwise, people are going to just complain and be like, wow, they didn't see any action. Then we need an event for it. I think uh, I think also secondarily, I think Arcadians are for the people. They're for the players who go to the locals. But I think this style of event is for the viewers. And viewers are what pay for our stuff if, if, if someone on the tier of Aiden is able to sell correctly, right? It's, it's something that you might be able to validate to someone else to say, look how well this event did. Uh, please give me more of your money. Yeah. So it's just like the Ludwig Invitational. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super right. invitational. Yeah, I want you all to keep thinking about the titles because I'm going to make you all do a round of what your title suggestions are for this event. But Chrome, where do you think the event should be? You know, we got to put top players in more situations. We got to put them yep. in more opportunities to get into mischief <laughs> and mayhem. And I'm saying we go right back to Hot Atlanta. We're going to Magic City. Oh, We're God. mixing it up. We're going nuts out there. They're coming back at 5 in the morning. I don't want to see any more top players exist safely in the world in uh, that they maybe couldn't lose all their money at the strip club. That's what they want, and that's what they crave. If you talk about Smash World Tour with Wheat, he just talks about how none was at the bar until 4 a.m., and that right. half the players were there. That's mm -hmm. what they want. Just give it to them. Send them to Atlanta. It's time. Rome, consider Monaco. Yes, or <laughs> Dubai. Just get them stuck there. Wow. Hell yeah. They're Let's not coming back. <laughs> we're, falling, we're falling into the uh the the cursed the cursed lands all right time for naming the event nobody knows i'm sticking with milwaukee bruce city bash so you, he should call the event bruce city, city bash and just take over an existing event yes okay unsure fight pit negative one i don't know bonfire 10 yeah the <laughs> national spartan there's already a word for this g-town tom Ooh. came up with it or at oh, least he's used it We've a done Spartan this. It's called event. a Spartan instead of an Arcadian. This is okay. Chrome. Zay Nagby's all nude barbershop. We know we have all fantasized about it. All right. 500 to Tori, 250 to Chrome, and uh, negative 100 for the other two for I'm trying to uh, shill their shit and get me killed by Chicago Union enforcers. I, he, should, uh, he should get at least negative 200 for that. I, I'm gonna. Hey, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call a couple people. Right. You're about taking up right. points. I'm calling a couple people up. We're gonna and see what happens. Oh, no. Whoa! Oh, 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 hey, whoa! Well, it's not hey, a we'll red light. Yeah, well, hey, listen, okay. listen, listen. This show All right. Rise. All right. Let's move on to our next topic. Zane is struggling against Amsa. He created the Munch. His Yoshi alter ego. Cody is struggling versus Samus. He started to grind Samus. He might even take lessons from Duck. In general, how important is playing as different characters? to improving against them in top-level melee. I will say this. What are these hoes doing? <laughs> They're not learning anything. I'm watching these streams. <laughs> this, is not, this is not enriching. This is not productive. This is not empowering. This is just top-level chicanery and mm -hmm. nonsense. It's cool. That said, if Amsa spent two months on Falx or Falco, it would be over. I think, it's an that, I think I think that uh, it can be it can be an effective way to uh, uh, empathize with your opponents and understand their point of view. But uh, much like uh, much like my good my good Jake said, uh, uh, these guys are just playing. They're just they're just streaming. They're just playing video games. None of these none of these guys are in the are in the trenches training like the professional athletes they are. They should not be streaming this. They should be doing this in a dark cave where no one can see what they're doing. That's exactly how sports does it. Dark cave. <laughs> yeah. This is this and is the same. And shit. This is the same as going on unranked, finding a Falco that laser spams you for four minutes straight, exiting out, picking Falco, and going back and just trying to laser them the whole time, or picking Peach and just down smashing. This is the exact same thing. It's ego. It's cope. 
no, stick to the character. Don't you have nothing to learn from playing the other one? Grind it out. I disagree uh, with that. Goddamn but, missiles. Well, as I'm sure said, that that kind of concept I've heard of it referred to as like having a hate fox or a hate falco, where you just mm-hmm. do the thing that you hate that they do to you. And I feel like that's actually like pretty explicitly how you learn how to counter it because you just do what what they hit you with when you do it. And I think that's just good concept in general. I don't think that Cody doesn't know the answers though. I think he probably is like he definitely knows and he can figure yeah, them out quickly enough. He can play it more from the fox's perspective and yeah. probably figure out more. Every time for I watch us when we don't know the game. I realize Hugo Gonzalez was the smartest player to ever play the game. Mhm. No one will ever achieve his peace. Yeah, expand on that. <laughs> See, Hugo had absolutely zero natural talent to execute a single thing in this game, nor did he learn any of the technology at any point, including shooting the charge shot the correct way. You think he's fastball missing? You think he's AIing outside of those like two months where he practiced it? He's still force stocking Zane and then losing the next game and then counterpicking back to where Zane counterpicked and force stocking him. Cody has, you know, the super duper controller, a hands from God, and 10 years of practice in this game. And it's it's not coming together. Hugo is the greatest player to ever play. I see it more every day. I agree. All right, let's uh, let's give uh, two hundred points to Chrome for that. One hundred points to everybody else, and let's move on to our our tiebreaker. Now, here's the thing: you're all essentially tied. There was somebody that might have been keeping track of scores, uh, <laughs> but the scoreboard has been broken all episode. I've just been calling them out. That means everybody is in this. Although I do have in my head that I imagine Andrew and Tori are in a lead with Chrome and Jake uh, just a little bit behind. Uh, Let's start off with our first of two tiebreakers. The first one, for an average person, which time loop would take more time to escape? Gary Kasparov, Chess, is that how you pronounce that? And Cody Schwab, SSBM. I'm gonna talk first because I already said my uh, my answer in the uh, in the pre in the pregame. You just pick Puff and you grind your head against Cody as much as you can. You just read as much as you can. You try your best. You maybe you might be able to uh, to kind of like RNG manipulate the first stocks of a few of the games, but you just get there eventually. It's not an average person, uh, melee player. It's an average mm-hmm. person. Do you think how long do you think they would take for them to realize that Puff can do all that? That is a good. That is a good point. I think that okay. I think I will need a few uh, a few leverages on this because most people know the game, the rules of chess, right? Because, like, say we do an average person, they don't know the rules of chess. That's an entirely different conversation, right? I still think, like, it, it, both of those are just going to take forever, you know? And uh, in that situation, I think that eventually you're effectively just saying both are random. Uh, and I think randomly you're going to win two games of melee before you win a, a, a game of chess against one of the greatest players that have ever, that's ever done it for thousands and thousands of years. Mm. Like the, the game has just been played for so long. So it, it, it's a difference of the starting point of the, yeah, as opposed to fighting the best player at the year where melee is at its peak talent, playing the best character, the, the, best, the best player. Controller. Yeah. He's JV in the world of professional sports. Okay. The best melee player is a JV player compared to like professional sports. And then on top of that, chess is the oldest game that is still being played at that top level. Like with like where, where the, the strategy at right. that original point is still I'm going. sure we haven't seen what we've seen what chess computers can do, right? If the best they could do for a long time was only tie at best. And then they had to reprogram them. We haven't seen anything like that with Melee. The closest we've seen is the Melee of the Taskbot. That guy's destroyed Blur, the greatest of all time. I mean, in levels of, you know, newer players, surely we can see where the comparisons are. And it's like, obviously, there's just, it's, it's no comparison. I don't, I don't think it's possible for any person in thousands of years with zero knowledge to beat either competitor. Uh, it, it's just, there's too much information that could potentially learn. The only thing that you could maybe come to the conclusion of is by watching enough of one person you have a highly analytical person and they're going to try to figure out you know what to do someone might grind 2000 years as Mewtwo and be like okay well this isn't going to work they might think Mewtwo's the best character they don't even know Fox is a good character Mm -hmm. who knows how long do you think it's going to take for them to learn Soul Stunner they're not going to learn damn there's no answer Chrome the limit does not exist. 
So I can I can talk for 20 minutes about this, and I can nitpick about like you know are they playing Don't. a set? Is it classical chess? We're not going to do any of that. Really, the biggest thing that people aren't thinking about is the iteration process of improvement, which is how do you get better at both of them? And the reality is, Gary Kasparov is a son of a bitch and will not teach you chess, and would have a much actually harder time teaching you chess. This is someone who touch move violated against uh, Susan Polgar and then cheated to win the game and then said women can't play chess. <laughs> Cody will actually probably teach you how to play melee after the game. Cody could probably get somebody to beat Cody in about five years. You'd have to ask him during the set. Do you think Cody would do mid-set yes. coaching for you? Yes. If, yes. You, if you had enough yeah, iterations of asking him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cody, Cody's doing it. I really and like I the angle that, that, that it's, it's mainly because Cody is more likely to teach you during the set. That's funny. Tori, what do you think? Yeah, if you could ask him and then, like, you not even just mid-set, mid-game. Like, you're on your last stock. You're just like, dude, what do I do? <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, so the thing is, if you make a slight inaccuracy in chess on move six, uh, you might, for an, even for a good player, but especially a novice, yeah, you wouldn't figure that out for 100 million more iterations of the game. Mm -hmm. And... Th that's how long it would take it's just not realistic that that would ever happen and for melee if you can make it a perfect uh time loop recreation every time so it's groundhog's day you can spawn fall through the platform by holding down immediately buffer shield and buffer roll to ledge and cody will eventually approach you and you know exactly when it's going to happen what if the and boards if you... are not one or two what if they're not three or four you can't fall through the plats yeah but you learn that eventually I know, with Marth, it's three or four. With Spacey's, it's only four. Uh, and then they will, you'll eventually, if you have the perfect run of like maybe 100 frame-perfect inputs in a row, you recreate a perfect time loop, and you can beat him. You will never beat Kasparov in chess. It will not happen ever. There are two men. You would run out of seconds of the universe. Would this be like save states though, where like Cody just continuously makes the same inputs each time? That's what a time loop is. If you have the same inputs, it's the same outputs. Why is Kasparov not uh, like that? He is, but you just, that's the thing. Chess is already like that. You don't, melee is, is imperfect information because of reaction times. So if Cody tries to approach you, he can just be wrong. But you Kasparov get perfect inputs is what you're saying. You have, you have to get to the point of having perfect inputs, which is technically possible. With chess, there's no execution. It's just knowing chess. You actually have to get better than, than Kasparov at chess uh, to beat him. And that's kind, of, that's kind of based on my argument of, I think it, it, the game is more fun if both of the people know the basics of the game going in. The, the question's more fun that way. And I think in that equation where you like, you played melee as a kid and you understand the function of it. it I mean, you'd you, learn eventually. It's, it's, yeah, melee is so much faster. It's, Even if you I mean, didn't know either, yeah. you would learn eventually. After oh, sure, but if you, don't years, know, sure. if you don't know either, you, they don't even know what the horse do. So Yeah, then like, you would get flagged and they would <laughs> kick you out and that game's over, yeah, then you I go guess. again. Yeah, all know. right. Well, in, good, in true fashion, that tiebreaker did not progress my knowledge of who should win this episode at all. <laughs> so we are going to move to our second tiebreaker. The sun, moon, and earth aligned last week to generate a total eclipse across much of the United States. In ancient times, this marked the god's fury with a king or the leader of a given civilization. Who should we sacrifice to the gods after this eclipse, and how should the sacrifice be made? Jake, you can go first. Jake Johnson. <laughs> All right. Well, I hurt my eyes, so um, I, 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 I can't see really good anymore. So I, I, I'm already mad at the sun. So I'm down to do some sacrificial, some sacrificial uh, uh, things. But what I'm, what I'm wondering is who that I sacrifice will, will the gods like? Who will, who, who will they, they? enjoy me sacrificing and i think there are too many jake johnsons on this planet i want to be the only one i will kill nick from the new girl i will kill him ritualistically okay so we lose spider-man and into the spider-verse part two or across the spider-verse part two yeah this uh, is go ahead this is like the conversation of if we were to send one person to fight the aliens, who would it be? And the answer's got to be Mango. There's just a chance we try to sacrifice him, and he just wins the sacrifice. The god <laughs> comes down, and he just wins. He could lose, but that's just how it goes. I think it's got to be Mango. They're happy if they take him, and there's a chance he just wins, and we just get to keep Mango. I see. So every sacrifice in human history has been the gods playing melee against the sacrifice person, and they just keep losing because they never saw melee. That's right. Yeah, Kasparov, what do you think? 
I really think it's time to take all the modders and make sure that the crop is beautiful again. The vibes mm. are bad. We can sense the evil that you know festers in the seeds of melee. We need to take anyone who mm. understands anything about electrical engineering or has ever sold a controller above three hundred dollars. I see Jake Johnson there again, sad. Hey, minor two sixty. You would have me kill Spark. Minor, minor two sixty. Yeah. You would have yeah, me kill do my it. son. Yeah, and that's when we can, you know, we can like the flood, you know, emerge anew. I can't kill my son. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that. Tori, what do you think? Weak. I think we we sacrifice the uh, melee top hundred, and we make that that thought argument a reality, and we see what yeah. happens. All right, for your performance in the episode, I'm going to give the win to Bonfire Ten. Bonfire Ten is our champion pundit. Well played by everybody. We're going to go That's into rigged. our free for all. It wasn't the most amazing tiebreaker, but eh, I wasn't really impressed with anybody. <laughs> what do you want from me? Sometimes it goes that way. Let's go into a, a brief break, and we'll come back and see on the sticks what happens with Chroma versus Unsure versus the Box Man. Nobody knows. Stay with us. Hey, okay, you guys can start fighting now. Hey, chat. So yeah, this was this was a fucked up episode. And imagine they they did not keep track of points the whole time. And then at the end they're like, oh, and guess what? A woman a woman wins. That's kind of just <laughs> There was somebody in the chat keeping chat track. Oh, okay, okay. It was rigged, but I was keeping track of the points. Don't worry. Yeah. It's just melee in twenty twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. You had like uh two thousand one hundred and fifty or something like that. Wow, a lot of points. <laughs> yeah. So who's who here? I think it was Unsure's Green. Carly Classify. Jack, you know what that's a reference to? I don't. Uh, me neither. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to quiz you. You want me to sure. unmute Chrome and ask? No, no. Okay, okay. Talk. We don't need to know. No. You got anything to shill? What's on your mind? Uh. Uh. Follow me on Twitter. Free yeah. Palestine. That's kind of the two big ones. Yeah. They can see my uh, my uh uh camera, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll just be juggling for the remainder of this. <laughs> I think I you've argued, you've like got everyone. the tie for the one of the two best Smash tweets of all time. What is it? The, uh, the F slur. Yeah. 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 And That's then the cool. other one is uh, Toph getting his uh, balls crushed in the timeout of Hbox versus Zamsa. What? You've never what? seen this? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I'll send it to you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know what Chrome is referencing, but I do know that he's got no stocks left, and he should start camping. It there's no shame well, in camping in a free for all at one stock. It's it's probably a play on ossify, but I don't know what the Carly K being. Yeah, something. it's that. What? But it's Sydney Sweeney. It's a reference to Sydney Sweeney, but instead it's ossify. Uh, is that? Does she play a character named Carly something? No. Yeah, all the time. She's very pretty. You guys know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Ooh. Unsure wow. is. I think that's the fastest it's gone to a 1v1. Oh my god. We've seen. It's definitely up there. I, I think Unsure is showing off. So is. no Is. Nobody knows playing on the box. Yes, almost certainly. Okay, so it's double cheater. Who would have thought, ask? you know? Both of them? Ooh, is, it, wow. is it two boxes? <laughs> yeah. Oh my that's god. That's the thing. On four side, it's really right. important. You have you to, wanna, to go I think you should confront them. Let's let's unmute them about their box usage. All right. All right. All right let's talk about boxes for a second. How fair they are. Hold on a no, second. No, let's let's get him out of there again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually that... I'm actually way worse on the box than I am. On... All right. <laughs> yeah. That none of that made sense really. I think they're they're kind they're of they're breaking up. There's a lot of static. Ooh. I've never seen it go this, like, having two people so early where the third person died with three stocks left. Now it's just a normal game. I know. It's, it's a little odd. Definitely the, the weirdest one the was when Josh Man just told me that he wanted to play in the game, but he just played Yoshi or something and charged forward smashes and said he was a stage hazard. Oh, but he was the winner. He didn't... I don't think or, he won. No, he I don't did. mean the melee game, but he won... Did he win he the... won the episode, yeah. Right, that's funny. Because that's, yeah, he just became a stage hazard. Sometimes that is the, the most fun thing to be. Mm -hmm. I, there should be a game where you can be in like an NPC in a uh, like a Skyrim esque RPG. I think that that ends pretty quickly. Well, you get to play like You're different NPCs. That's how you add content. You control all yeah. the NPCs in that kind of game, but 
uh, the CPU is on the adventure. And that's, oh no. He's taking a rest. Dying. He's sleeping. As I lay dying. Got to carry that grave up the mountain. Whoop. Oh, shit. All right, let's, let's let, I'm trying to go to bed. <laughs> Let's get it on with this. So true. So and that true. is it. Unsure, the winner of the fight on four side. Bonfire 10, the winner of the four side fights. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, dead. Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Jack. What? You don't know who Carly Kloss is. No. I have said this is the worst day. All it's right. Get out of here. Everybody, we'll see you in two weeks. Toodaloo. Bye-bye. Right, Thank bye. you. <laughs>